Did the Archer of Infamy score a bullseye on the Infinite One? Or did Damien Priest bask in the glory of Keith Lee? Don't you dare quiver, folks. This is NXT. Support! No DQ! Welcome everybody to What's NXT for July 24th, 2019. I'm your host, the Rated R Reviewer, Stefan Osborne, joined as always by the General Jerry Slaughter. Good morning, wrestling fans. And I'm not going to beat around the bush. This might have been a perfect episode of NXT. Absolutely. We got four matches. Mm -hmm. We got an in-ring promo that was lengthy and did something. Um... Pretty moment, Zach. We got a great main event that had a little bit of, of storyline momentum going in. This might have been the perfect episode. And, of we've, got, and we've got huge setups for the takeover event, if not the matches yeah, themselves. We're a couple of weeks out of takeover, and just let's start yeah, let's at the so, very beginning. Yeah. Well, let's start before the beginning because the show actually starts with a recap of the main event and the ending of last week's show, mm -hmm. which we weren't too high on. No, we weren't. Because we were all. expecting a fucking match. Yep. That's what we were hoping for, and we didn't get a match. No. But we got the setup for the main event for Toronto, and tonight we are going to get the rest of the setup. Yep. We are going to see both uh, Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano reveal their stipulations for the two out of three falls match at Toronto. Backtrack so, a little bit though, because we didn't know it was going to be a um, uh, three stages of hell match until afterwards with the WWE exclusive. They didn't announce it until then. So now we know that and that, that they're announcing at least two of the stipulations tonight. And then Regal's going to announce the third one. If it's needed, I think right at the show, which I think makes it that much more special. So our actual first uh, spot of the night is a match. We've got the second round, the semifinals of the breakout tournament, Jordan Miles versus Angel Garza, and Angel Garza looks so cool in this match. A Angel Garza is the shit. There's no that. way around. No, he, there, there's no, there's no way around this. This guy is a great heel. He's got all the athleticism. He's got the looks. He's got the charm. He's got the character. He's got everything going for him. I think this was a pretty cool to mildly okay match somewhere mm -hmm. in there in that vein. But Angel Garza definitely had the coolest move of the match. Yes. So at one point. Uh, Miles it jumps out onto the apron like he's got the upper hand he does like this cannonball drop kick into Angel Garza and follows it up with something fuck if I know but he jumps out onto the apron where Angel Garza has pushed the uh, apron skirt up a little further into the ring and that's where uh, where uh, Jordan Miles yeah thank you Jordan Miles lands and then he pulls the uh, skirt out from under Jordan Miles, who just takes a wicked fall back first into the apron, and uh, <laughs> to me, that was the coolest move of the match. It wasn't even a fucking wrestling move. Uh, I was about to say, it was very Looney Tunes-esque, because he, he would turn around and just kind of like, like ah. you know what? When used appropriately, i.e. I, I Kung Fu Hustle, yeah, Looney Tunes shit in real life, when used appropriately, yes, and this was definitely appropriate. Uh, yeah. it was, like I said, coolest move of the night. But, uh, yeah, actually might have been the coolest move of the night. Uh, before I break down, I've got like four notes, I guess. That's probably one of the notes is the, the pulling of the skirt out from under. Yeah. Jordan, Jordan Miles, everybody. What did you think about this opening match, Jerry? I knew it was going to be a great match going in. Really? 
I, I, I automatically assumed it was going to be because Jordan Biles had, had an awesome performance on his first match. And Angel Garza, who's, you know, already impressed us in that first round as well. He, he did a great job in this match as well. Like, you can tell there is a clear-cut face, a clear-cut heel in this, this match. This is true. So, Garza comes out and he won't high-five or acknowledge any of the male fans, but he sees a female fan and he's smooching her hand. Yep. He's just, he's, he's smarmy, he's, yes. but he's suave. That's why he's smarmy, is because he's so suave. And uh, I dig it. Um, I was hoping he was going to win. Yeah. Just because he is such a good heel, I think it would be a great uh, person for... I'm hoping that we see... Oh, fuck, what's his name? Let me look back. The guy that trained with Matt Hardy. Oh, Kim Grimes. Yeah, Grimes. I'm hoping we see Grimes advance. Yeah. But in this case, maybe we don't see Grimes advance because now we need a baby face. And is well as Bronson. No, Jordan Jor 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 Miles won. So, Cameron Grimes. I don't know. Yeah, we, now we need a heel. And yeah. I think. And I think Cameron Grimes is the heel because, like, um, his his opponent was um, Isaiah Swerve Scott, who's definitely like was the baby face in that match. Okay. Well, this works then. So yeah, but it's it's gonna be a great fit, like finals match if that's what we get because. I don't see Bronson Reed pulling off the victory. We've already established that he's, you know, green. 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 I mean, like, like Hulk, literal, I believe, literal. like Hulk green. Green, 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 green. I'm just saying, when we watched him wrestle, I was pining for the days of early, uh. Again, I can't remember the name. <laughs> the guy from Hawaii. Connor Reeves? There we go, Connor yeah. Reeves. It, My name recollection. Yeah, just, I, I don't think anything involving Bronson Reed in the finals is in the card at this point. He seems like the type, like I said, he'd be more of a fit for NXT UK, I think. But that's just me, so. I could definitely see him going there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's worth sending him all the way to a different country he, being that green. Well, but. he's he's Australian, so he'd be a better fit over there. Well... But, yeah, it, it, Miles is uh, not finisher, but his setup to the finisher is this discus clothesline into the corner. Now he hits one, and he goes up top, and Garza rolls away. Very, very far away. Very, very <laughs> far away. And so uh, Miles goes for a leapfrog off the top rope, and Garza just hits this wicked drop kick. Yeah. Out of midair, uh, gets a near near fall. But then again, Miles hits another discus uh, clothesline into the corner and then follows it up with a deadlift German from his belly. Mm -hmm. Deadlifts him all the way up, all the way back, bridges the German, one, two, three. Folded him like a taco. <laughs> yeah, basically. Well, like basically That's a good uh, description. Uh, uh, he didn't, we didn't really expect the pin fall off of that, but sure enough, we got it. I said kick out. No, 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 no kick, kick out. out. But, but that was such an impressive German suplex. He was, I was like, if he doesn't kick out of this, I, I wouldn't really be surprised. <laughs> now, this match isn't over. Well, well the, the match is over, not over, just not the segment. We have Shane Thorne, of all people. He comes out to commentary, and it takes him name-dropping himself for me to realize who the fuck he is. Yeah. It's been that long. And without his partner, his Australian... Nick Miller. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Uh, I have no idea. But he lets us know, and he says uh, none of these guys matter. Like, he's been there so long, and he could just... Like, I don't know if he's challenging these guys or uh, not. I, 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 think, I think he's just saying he he's now... <laughs> Could be I, an NXT. I think he's just player. there to use the wordplay of the breakout tournament to say that he is now going to break out on his own. Yeah. <laughs> no real clue. Thin but but all, all he really ended up doing was piss off more Ronaldo. So, Knock his glasses off when he ripped his headset off. Yeah. Beth Phoenix was pretty much holding him back. <laughs> so. Now, after this, we get our first promo of the two. We've got Johnny Gargano here uh, dropping his stipulation. He says uh, Cole made this personal when he went to uh, Cleveland, and this is no longer about the title. 
You know things are getting dangerous when it's no longer about the title. He just wants to go to Toronto and whoop um, Cole's ass. Yeah. yeah. And uh, his stipulation is what he says he's grown to really enjoy. And I think I saw a street fight between him and Ciampa. Yeah, they at, had one. At, no, I mean at Chicago, when I went live to Chicago for uh, Money in the Bank mm -hmm. and went to the NXT TakeOver. That was an awesome match. And so that's what he's going to do. He's going to make it a street fight. A lot of people sleep on the fact that Adam Cole is a combat zone wrestling champion. So he's, he is very sure of hardcore matches and street fights. So, this, that's going to be interesting, but at the same time, there's no blood and NXT and whatnot. So. Well, Gargano says, bring your, you know, bring, bring your, your weapons, weapons, bring, bring your, your blood, friends. Bring, bring everybody. Um, so, he's basically challenging all of Undisputed Era. I, however, don't think we're going to see any more of Undisputed Era in oh, this they're, match. Oh, they're going to be busy. Yeah. Each of them is going to have a title match prior to the main event. Mm -hmm. So I don't see them getting involved, although stranger things have happened. But uh, uh, we, I've already touched on this. Like, we were discussing it during the um, during this promo. I miss Johnny Badass. I miss the um, two-side Johnny. That you didn't know where to root for him or, you know, hate the guy's guts during the Alistair Black feud. He I'm was, hoping they kind of revisit that a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's in the cards, so. though. He was the dichotomic one. Yes. He had the good in him and the evil. But even you know, that gave him a little more depth and whatnot. Now he's just trying to look hard. And yeah, without Champa, working. there's no reason for him to yeah. have the evil side. No. So now we're just back to good old happy Johnny wannabe champion. Mm -hmm. So anyway, street fight. After this, we get our second match of the night. We've got Xia Li versus Bianca Belair. And this was pretty good. I was about to say, uh, uh, Bianca Belair, just, of, yeah. I'm going to say this right now, she just dominated in this match. Like, Xia Li got a couple good kicks in, but otherwise, this was the Bianca Belair show. She is showing that she is ready for prime time. She is ready for a call-up. She's got everything you want for her. You... She's deceptively strong, is what it is. You look at the girl and you're like, okay, she yeah, she can posture, she can preen, she can slap her ass, whatever. And she can lift. She can lift. Yeah. She can chuck, is what she can do. I mean, I commented when she was just getting in the ring, just her ass mm -hmm. is amazing. Oof. But that ass also does work. Yes. She does a, a stalling vertical suplex and then just does three squats. Yeah. Now, she doesn't get anything off of it. I believe Xia Li actually gets out of the suplex. Yeah. But still. And even before then, she does a fallaway slam. No fall -away. no fall away. Yeah, it was, it was like a fall away throw. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. That That's just upper body strength to max right there. No kidding. Jeez. She hits a glam slam and then a handspring off of the ropes into a splash onto Xia Li's back. So and she's flipping everywhere that too. That <clears throat> uh, now Xia Li does get some offense in here. A lot of her uh, kicks, she's you know she's the uh, uh, I can't remember Wu, it's Wu something. Yeah, Wushu. I yeah. think. Uh, anyway. She gets a bunch of these kicks in and then goes into the corner and uh, jumps up on the middle rope with that twist about. And then I think she goes for a drop kick or something, but uh, Bel Air counters, or she dodges it, and then she hits the KOD. Yeah. Which just, it didn't look uh, precise or anything. It looked like she was just ready to end this match and like... She, she, was, done, she was done messing with Zia Lee. That, that, no that's posing, what, no, no... She just lifted her up and fucking dropped her down. I, th I think she's shown she's pretty much done messing with people. She wants another shot at the title. And she very well may get it. Or she'll get a call up. Either way, she, Bianca Belair is back on the roll she should have been in the first place. Definitely. So after this, we get Killian Dane in a promo similar to the first few, but in this case, 
he is talking about something he's already done. So we've got clips of him attacking Matt Riddle. And I think they showed three, four, five times him doing that uh, senton into Riddle through the stage. Yeah. Well, they, they interwove it in with the um, stuff that he's, ar he's already shown before, all the car bombs and attacks and whatnot. They smattered it yes. with that clip. They but, smattered it. But what I really liked about this is he actually said why he attacked Matt Riddle. Yeah. He, he actually said, Matt Riddle isn't just anybody. He's somebody. And he he lists off all Matt Riddle's accomplishments and says, like, if, if I'm going to go after anybody at this point, if I'm going to make a statement, it's going to be against Riddle. Yeah. So, this was... Okay. I'm digging it. I am looking forward to that match. I hope that makes a sixth match on the TakeOver card, but we'll see. Would be nice. Yeah. After this, we get footage and not a promo or nothing like that this is a hard cam like a, a black and white security cam security yeah. cam of jessamine duke getting out of the ring now why they would have the camera set up there instead of well well it's right the lockers you have to protect the lockers <laughs> so jessamine duke gets out of the ring and she goes to get in her locker and while she's got the door open and dude it wasn't necessarily the gym, but it was kind of a gym because, you know, it's the performance center. I called this last week. We see Jessamine Duke get attacked by Mia Yim, who runs by, throws the uh, locker door into Jessamine Duke's face slash arm and yells, what does she yell? I've got it written down. Surprise, motherfucker. Surprise, motherfucker. She went dokes. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they did some bleeping in this. Yeah. It made it seem real. Like, but she'll sort of go by the head baddie in charge. Yeah, she was totally Sergeant Dokes here, though. That yeah. was great. <laughs> All rise, motherfucker. Hard eyes, motherfucker. Large fry, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, she beats her down into the bottom locker and then slams that locker, or maybe kicks it into Duke's arm. Yep. And then that's where she cusses. Mm-hmm. And... So. And then the ladies start crying. So, that's two down. So, hopefully this means that we won't see Jessica Duke and we won't see Marina Shafir in the women's title match at yep. NXT TakeOver. And we still see Shayna Baszler win. <laughs> I mean, Shayna Baszler we, we, is Shayna we, we, Baszler. We, she, we can hope. She doesn't need those two. Yep. Let's just, I mean... Seriously, though, she doesn't need those two. Not to beat me a yim, Jesus. No. So, after this, we've got Velveteen Dream coming out for aforementioned middle of the mat or middle of the card in ring promo. This was Velveteen Dream basically calling out Roderick Strong, but not really to make a challenge for the belt, but to dismiss him as a challenger for the belt. Yep. Say he, he, he's not he's not capable of keeping up with the dream. And even, though, even though he's been wrestling, you know, maybe a decade longer. And even though he pinned Velveteen Dream in a six-man tag match. Yes. And of course, this brings out Roderick Strong, who, in his very lispy tone. Yeah, he's not a good actor. He's <laughs> great in the ring, but and and he's decent. Delivering lines on the mic. He's just not a good actor. He, he's not, he's not exactly a good leading man. He's good for a couple of quips here and there. Okay, yeah. But he's not exactly, you know, ready for prime time, so to speak. He really should be, though. He really, really should be. Yeah. Anyway, this is uh, where he basically challenges for the North American Championship at NXT TakeOver. And Velveteen Dream doesn't want any of it. Yeah. And was it before? I think it was after Roderick comes out. He says, I will I give the challenge to anybody else, basically. Anybody that can hear my voice. Yeah. I challenge you instead of Roderick Strong. Yeah. And this brings out, of all people, Pete Dunne. 
the bruiser a little bit of foreshadowing Roderick Strong said there's nobody on this continent that that deserves a cha challenge more than I the, 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 the title deserves a title shot more than I do so it, different continent yeah <laughs> so there you go uh, Pete Dunn comes out and he doesn't say anything he just looks at the championship well, first he about breaks Roderick Strong's hand because Roderick ends up trying to touch him. You don't try to touch Pete Dunn. He, 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 he'll take your fingers and pretty much remove them from your hand. General rule number five, don't yeah. touch Pete Dunn. Don't, don't touch Pete Dunn. Don't talk a lot in front of Pete Dunn. Do not touch Pete Dunn. So, yeah, he just stares at the belt with those hungry eyes of his. What's that leather strap in his mouth? Velveteen Dream looks for looks at him, just kind of edges his way back out of the ring and gets out of there. Now, after a godforsakenly long uh, commercial, I, I don't even know what it was for. I just know I kept having to fast forward. Oh, pretty much again. everything at WWE oh, Network is offering at this point. Holy crap. <sighs> We get the follow-up to this. There's follow-up. Roderick Strong's in the back, and he grabs a cameraman, and he's like, I want footage of this. Like, I want this on tape. And he brings him to Regal. Well, he's going to his office, but as we've seen, Regal doesn't really have an office anymore. He just <laughs> has pointless. the door he's to his office. The hallway. <laughs> he's, he's outside, and Roderick goes up to him, and he demands his title match at TakeOver. And Regal's and, and he rebukes Pete Dunn for getting involved. And Regal's like, "Well, I just got done talking to uh, Johnny Saint. Well, maybe not just got done, but still, he talked to Johnny Saint, and Dunn is going to be a part of NXT for a while." Yeah. And I guess his bonus for signing with NXT was a North American Championship match because I love Pete Dunn. Don't get me wrong, but he has done nothing to deserve this match. No. Not a damn thing. At least Roderick Strong got a pinfall on the champ. It might have been during a six-man tag, but he got the pinfall. <clears throat> Pete Dunne just showed up and looked at the title. Yeah. We, we had to keep this in mind, though. If you caught the exclusive after Pete Dunne initially lost the belt to Walter, Regal actually approached Pete Dunne, just looked him up and down, nodded, and walked away. This was months ago. This was this was like right after uh, Takeover Phoenix, and sure enough, I thought it was going to be. I thought Pete Dunne were going to get sooner. Does does Regal coerce Pete Dunne over to regular NXT with a North American title opportunity? I, I thought that was kind of lame myself. <laughs> I, I thought for sure he'd go right, like you know, be put into a match with either Gargano or Cole, but looks like we're going to get him as a North American champion. Hell. Since um, NXT is going to possibly be moved to Fox Sports Network at this point, it would shock me if Pete Dunne take, gets the North American belt, takes it overseas, rechristens it something else, then NXT comes up with a TV, TV belt. Okay. People may hate me for this, but I gotta say it. I know that Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole 3... Two out of three falls is going to be an awesome match. Yeah. Definitely main event worthy. But it's Gargano Cole 3. Yeah. We've seen this shit before. Mm -hmm. We saw the two out of three falls match before. Fuck. Yeah. This, if, if you're going to bring Pete Dunne to NXT, it should have been Pete Dunne versus Adam Cole. Yes. In any kind of match. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. Ladder match. Fucking surprise me. Yeah. But the North American Championship, when Velveteen Dream versus Roderick Strong was good enough on its own. Yeah. Uh, uh, I still think it's probably be the show Steve Arnold. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. So we're going to get the as you said, match. As you've said, we've already seen Cole Gargan, though. We've already seen that match. Well, we saw the triple threat match for the title coming. Yeah. And yes, uh, Regal makes that match. But that's not the end of the segment because Roderick Strong also demands a singles match. He wants Pete Dunne next week. Yep. That I'm all in favor of. Th th this will actually, um, if Roderick Strong, no, if Pete Dunne pins Roderick Strong in this match, 
that at least solidifies that he deserves to be in the match because he'll be defe defeating the number one contender for the North American belt. I don't in any way see a pinfall happening for that match. I don't see either one getting the victory. Oh, it's going to be an all-out war at the end of it. You're going to have the um, Street Profits out there. You have Undisputed yeah, out there. You have Gargano out there. Everybody's going to be out Everybody's there. Everybody's going to be out there. It's going to be a melee because... <coughs> yeah. Motherfuckers. Yeah. And four title belts. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Or, well, no nine because you got the triple threat. So nine motherfuckers. And yeah. Four title belts. Jeez. Yeah, it, that's probably how the show's going to close. But, I personally am looking forward to that match. Oh, yes. All the way up until whatever fucky finish we get. Regal, however, is going to take it under advisement at this point. Um, we do get that match. We're going to get that next yeah, week. Yeah, we're getting it. We're totally but, getting it. Anytime Regal sa says, um, I'll think about it, it pretty much means ask your mother. And then your mother will say yes. <laughs> well, I don't know who that mother is, but uh, later on in the show, <laughs> they let us know that we are going to get that match. They let us know about another match, but uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. After all of that, we have our third match of the night. Our second women's match of the night. Two women's matches. Hell yeah. yeah. Like I said, uh, still yet, damn near perfect show. Mm -hmm. Casey Catanzaro versus the newly christened uh, heel... Io Shirai. Yes. And her entrance is awesome. It's the same entrance that she basically had when she came out for her two sentence promo the week prior. But awesome. I cut the lights out. Because yeah. they do. The lights cut out and then her her letter or Japanese lettering and her name Io Shirai is fucking flickering on the screen. And I'm like, dude, this is gonna give me a seizure. Yeah. But, but it's a good seizure. Yeah, great seizure. And then when she gets to the to the ring, not in the ring, but outside the ring, they start strobing the ring. Then she gets in and she just runs at the ropes, just screaming at the crowd. And Jerry likened it to Nikki Cross. But I say it's different, because Nikki Cross screams because she's crazy. Io Shirai is shrieking at the crowd. I don't need you! Probably or less in, what she's screaming. in Japanese. I have yeah. no idea what she's screaming, but... I'm digging this. She's got the same uh, black leather, just pants and a crop top. Something. Yeah. And she she has gone to full blown badass. Dude. There's nothing really. Around. Even her music is like got this really cool undertone to it, almost like a trip hop kind of thing. It sounds awesome. Last week I predicted this was going to be a four minute match. That maybe Casey Catanzaro was going to get a couple of cool reversals in, but for the most part, Io Shirai was going to beat her down and pin her. We didn't it was that. a short match. Yeah. But we didn't get a pinfall. We didn't get any kind of normal uh, finish here. And we didn't really get any offense by Casey at all. No. Because right at the outset, she gets drop, drop kicked across the ring. Yeah, bell rings and Io Shirai runs at Casey and drops her into the corner with a shotgun drop kick. And then runs at the corner with a Meteora. Then she picks her up, double underhook, uh, backbreaker. I don't know what you call it. Yeah, it it's works. it got to be a better name. But it works. And Casey rolls to the outside and uh, Io Shirai is looking after her with her back to the ramp. And suddenly... He called it a second and a half before we saw it. There's Candice LeRae Candace running to the ring. Break, breaks up the match, causes a disqualification, but she gets some shots in on Io Shirai. I don't know why, though. Because it was still a match, and Io Shirai hadn't done anything illegal. She wasn't going for a chair or anything like that. Mm -hmm. She just hit a couple of sweet moves in a, in a backbreaker, and suddenly... Candice LeRae storms to the ring, but she got her shots in. She hits this uh, step up in Ziguri right to the side of Io's face. Yeah. And then hits uh, what she hit. I've got a note. Suicide die on yeah. the outside. S Tope Suicida onto yeah. Shirai. And then she grabs a chair and Shirai bolts. Yeah. Shir Shirai is even calling her out. It's like, oh, you need a chair? Is that what you need? You need a chair to beat me? <laughs> That Tope Suicida, though, was awesome. Yeah. She lands it square into Io Shirai, who backs into the uh, guardrail, 
or the padded you know, rail. Outfit drove her backwards on it. But she catches her perfectly, and Candace just lands on her feet. Yep. It was perfect. Yep. Like much of this show was. Holy crap. Um, this is just setting up for maybe a seventh match at NXT TakeOver it's, Toronto. It's, it's, it's really weird how um, Johnny Gargano's got the uh, chick, chick singing his song. But Candice LeRae's got a dude singing her song. And they sound so similar. <laughs> Alright. Up next we've got Adam Cole's promo where he's going to drop his stipulation. And uh, he wants to take this opportunity to shout out to the boys. Mm -hmm. To the boys. <laughs> Step in there. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be an awesome show. He says that Roderick Strong, despite being in a triple threat, is going to beat both Pete Dunne and Velveteen Dream and become the North American champion. And that uh, the Street Profits are stupid mm -hmm. for accepting the challenge. And uh, O'Reilly and Fish are going Red to Dragon. and take the tag team championships. And at the end of NXT TakeOver Toronto 2, Undisputed Era is going to be draped in gold. Draped in gold. So your your prophecy is starting to come true, sir. I, I believe. I, I think it's more Noah's prophecy. Because I, um, I think they're both, both going to lose their matches, but Cole's going to win his. And that's going to cause the rift. We did a video at the end of December. Yeah. On what we saw coming for NXT next year. Yeah. This year. And you said before the end of the year, the Undisputed Era was going to be draped in gold. Oh, yeah. And how else this is am I right about to. my predictions? This was long term. We are more than halfway done with this year. Yeah. But Holy crap. It's, a, it's actually... It may come to fruition. It may not. But... Either way, it's going to be it's going to be insane to watch. So this is where we get our announcement of the legitimacy of Pete Dunne versus Roderick Strong next week. But we also get the announcement of what we figured was coming anyway, based off of their encounter last week: Tyler Breeze versus Jackson Riker. You completely skipped over the fact that it's going to be a regulation match. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that was that was Adam Cole's pick. That's how underwhelming it is. Yeah. So this is probably going to be the first fall of the, the three, and it's just a regular match. He says he beat Johnny Gargano twice in a regular match, and he's going to do it again. It's kind of weird that like Johnny Gargano would pick the um, heel route, and like Adam Cole would pick the face route in this one. He's like, I want a fair fight. I want a street fight. If you think about it, this is best of seven. Because they're two and two. Yeah. It's nuts. It's insane. It's insane. So, that brings us to the main event. And what a fucking main event. Oh, yeah. So, we knew about this match coming in uh, from last week. And we didn't know it was going to be the main event until the very beginning of the show. And, and that pleased me greatly. Oh, I forgot to. Uh, I got so caught up in it. Um, not who I expected to win, honestly. No. But before I break down, I've got a lot of notes for this match. I apologize to those of you that hate that, but I would hate to leave out at least two-thirds of what I've written down, because this was just an awesome match. Yeah. Between two big dudes. Yeah. Okay, so before I break it down, what did you think about the main event, Jerry? It wasn't Lee versus Dijakovic, but it was close. Next best thing? Oh, yes. It was the next best thing, I believe. Because we had two guys that are capable of pretty much doing anything in the ring. And they're large. They're big guys. And both of them have, like, this infinite potential to them to be main eventers there in that company. So, either one getting a victory over the other at this point was going to be great. I thought the match was going to get thrown out in some way, shape, or form. Because I'm, I can't see either one of these two winning or losing. There right was now. one spot where I thought they were going to both get counted out. Yep. Like the end of the It was going to be Lee Dijakovic uh, all over again. Yeah. Oh my God. Which, which would have been so disappointing because then we'd still be waiting on that rematch. They'll settle both feuds with a, a triple threat and yeah. disappoint us all. So, <laughs> at, at this point, I even said, it's like, if they're, if they're just going to have um, Keith Lee. Versus um, 
if they're gonna have Keith Lee, you know, not really doing anything, and have Dijakovic come back, and then have Luke Harper come back in the NXT, and have Dijakovic and Luke Harper team up, because that'd be an awesome team. They had an awesome match at Worlds Collide, and I think they'd be an awesome team since they both have the whole eye fixation thing, and they're two big dudes, so that would be awesome. Can you imagine if Keith Lee and um, uh, Damian Priest got on the same page and fought against those two? That match would be insane because you have these four huge dudes that can pretty much fly, throw each other around, just pummel each other with kicks and punches and clotheslines and shit. That would be a heavy hitting match. Power moves and high flying moves by mm -hmm. four big dudes. I dig it. Mm -hmm. Dig it. But in the meantime, this is the match we got. And, and it was great. Story. You know me. I love the story. We had the story going in where we thought Keith Lee was on his way to a heel turn. Mm -hmm. Based off of, I think, the last, at least the last promo, if not the last two promos that we saw out of him. Yeah. And he, he feels he deserves more than what he's getting. <coughs> and when people start talking like that, you automatically think, okay. Heel turn. We got double swerved. Yes, we did. Double swerved. When has that ever happened on NXT? So not only did we not get a heel turn by Keith Lee, we basically got a heel turn. But and I don't know if he was a babyface, but based off of you know his pomp and circumstance of him coming back as this new character, so far he's been babyface. He's been cheered like a babyface. Yeah. He's, I wouldn't say he's been a tweener because, like, people have cheered for him. He hasn't really, you know, responded to him in any way, shape, or form, so he really didn't know. Well, his entrance is severely cool. Yes. Like a baby face. So, swerve number two, Damian Priest basically turns heel here. Yeah. And I dig it. I dig the whole thing. This match was great. Okay. So, they start trading Dukes. That's how I put the notes. Yeah. Best way I could say it. Dukes and dodges. So they're throwing hands at each other, but every time somebody throws something, it's either blocked or dodged. And the sequence ends with Keith Lee going for a jumping roundhouse kick into uh, Damian Priest, who ducks out of the way. Yeah. And then they both look at each other all smug and shit. <laughs> like... I was like, easy there, Black Diamond. <laughs> um... My next note is where Keith Lee is running at Damian Priest in the corner, and this is where Priest starts to work on him because he hits a uh, dr or, well, he kicks Keith Lee's knee out from under him, sends him face first into the top turnbuckle, then starts hitting on him and beating on him, gets him down, then pulls him back with his foot on the back of his head slash neck, and curb stomps Keith Lee into the bottom turnbuckle. That, I, I was trying Holy to place shit. I was trying to place it, but that's how Paul Burchill did his um curb stomp when he was doing it in OBW and when he debuted in WWE or re debuted as the Ripper. Well, so Damian Priest looked great for the first, let's say, half of this match. Yeah. Um the, my next spot here is where he, he blocks two clotheslines that Keith Lee goes for. Because you know Keith Lee's got the power. But then turns around as a discus clothesline to Keith Lee that just levels him and he gets a near fall. Um, then he goes to get up top and Keith Lee comes over. So he grabs him in a wrist lock. And of course, we've already seen where he had this before. Keith Lee had the, the top wrist lock on him and overpowered him for the whole thing. Well, this time he does, he grabs his hand with his other hand. And, you know, uses both arm strength to overpower Keith Lee to climb all the way up to the top rope, walk the ropes to near the middle, and then comes off with a cross body. Yeah. And he goes for a pinfall that, thank God, Keith Lee saves this spot. He When he kicks out, he just throws him off of him, Goldberg style. Yep. Or Mark Henry style, or Big Show style. Like, pretty much a laying down gorilla press. Yes. <laughs> And that's what he was saving his strength for. Because when he was doing that top wrist lock, you could tell he wasn't putting any strength at all into it. It was all show. His his muscle wasn't flexing any. So he's supposed to do that DDP yoga thing where you flex.
flex back and forth. <laughs> At least make it look like you're trying to do something. Anyway, he starts uh, hulking up because he's got this spot that he does. I believe he did this with Matt Riddle too. And maybe at least one other person where he grabs the wrist and as the person's beating on him, he hulks up and he won't let go of the dude's wrist. He might have done this to Velveteen Dream. Anyway, he hulks up and then starts beating on him and then uses the wrist to pull him back and then beating him down and then pulling him back up. Oh, it was Coda Reeves. Okay. Yeah. And then he gets him in what he looks like he's going to go for a ripcord, but he pushes him into the corner and then runs in with a forearm that just levels Damian Priest. And then uh, he gets a near fall. And then Priest rolls outside. And then Lee goes outside, grabs him, throws him back in the ring. But as he's going to get back in the ring, Damian Priest hits him with a knee. And then, uh, god damn, there's a lot of shit that happens here. And then Priest actually picks him up. Yeah. Oh no, he hits him with a forearm and then a lariat and then gets a near fall. And then Priest actually picks him up and puts him in a falcon arrow and drops him and gets a near fall. A, a super impressive <coughs> falcon arrow. I'm only halfway through these notes. Good yeah. grief. But then Lee gets back into this and hits a pounce onto Damian Priest that throws him just fucking into oblivion. And you knew it was coming because Damian Priest jumped pretty high. Yeah. And Lee just... Hits him and gone. Way over into the corner. Let's see. Priest somehow gets uh, Lee on the outside. He runs the ropes, comes back, does a somersault over the top rope onto Keith Lee, who doesn't budge. In fact, catches Damian Priest mm -hmm. like he was going for a Hurricane Rana. Yep. And then goes for a power bomb, but Damien Priest somehow this was a little sketchy, but punches him, and punches him a couple yeah. times and then jumps up and escapes the power bomb. Only to what does he hit? He just sends a bit of Keith Lee into his Oh the skull cracker. Yeah. The clap that's the supposed to be illegal. The, yeah, the, the thunder clap. And then kicks Keith Lee back first into the steps. Yeah. And you think, oh my God, Keith Lee's done. No, this, this, this that was only the Keith Lee got pissed. Yeah, he hulked up again. The whole, uh, the whole arm grab shtick, like that was just the beginning of it. This was where he really hooked up. Anyway, yeah. So he gets up and ostensibly chases Damian Priest back into the ring, although it was really slow. It was more like stalks him. Yep. As Priest turns heel and goes cowardly. Gets back in the ring and gets behind the ref. And as soon as he got in the corner, I knew what was fucking coming. Yep. Damian Priest pushes the ref into uh, Keith Lee, who helps the ref out of the way. And while he's looking at the ref, uh, Damian Priest hits, what did they call it? It was like some sort of kick. Yeah, tornado or something. Cyclone, Cyclone. kick, yeah. Cyclone kick. And then uh, grabs Keith Lee from behind. For like a the reverse DDT, cutter. but he hits the rolling cutter. That's what they call it. Rolling cutter. And he's named it The Reckoning. One, two, three, pinfall. Damien Priest gets the win. That was shocking. Yeah, that a little shock, bit. That shocked me, actually. Because so far he's been undefeated under this new name. But we're talking about Keith Lee. Yeah. However, even though we've seen the spot before, it worked. Yeah. Using the ref so that Keith Lee doesn't look bad in the loss because it was not necessarily illegal, but it was heel tactics. Yeah. Shit works. And he got caught off guard to the side of the head with a fucking kick. Mm -hmm. And then the finisher. What you I, I, I like the fact that now they've solidified that Damien, Damien Priest is going to be a heel. So... So what if this pushes uh, Keith Lee over the edge and he turns heel anyway and then forms a tag team with Damian Priest, a heel tag team? I wouldn't be against that either. So. That brings us to the end of the main event. And here on What's NXT, we'd like to rate the main event using the General's 5-star rating system. Yep. Jerry, in this as perfect as I've seen episode of NXT, 
Where do you rate the main event? I'm going to give it a four. Four? Because three and three quarter star plus a quarter star for being off the back of a great show. Because as great as Damien Priest and Keith Lee was, it still doesn't really hold a candle for me to Keith Lee and Dr. Kobe. I know you can't, it's, it's always like, you know, measuring a Hanzo sword versus another Hanzo sword. You know, you don't do that. You just measure anything, uh, uh, any other sword by one that's not made by Let me argue one. for a higher rating here. Okay. 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 You may not have gotten him versus Dijakovic. Yeah. But honestly, the match was really great for what it was, but it was only the tip of the iceberg with Dijakovic. Yeah. How, what would we get? Four or five minutes before they both got counted out? It wasn't long. No. It wasn't enough time to establish... A full. This was a full match. They got eleven minutes mm -hmm. for this fucking match, and they did it. They knocked it out. And for which a, a match that you thought would probably would have thought would be slow paced, and a lot of rest holds and shit. Yeah. They took a ten plus minute match and made it entertaining from beginning to end. It's got full closure. Yep. We don't have to wait for another match. There was no fucky finish. Yes. It was heel tactics, but technically... That 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 does actually work, because now we actually do have Damian Priest as a heel. Both guys come out looking good, especially fucking uh, Keith Lee. Yeah. That jumping roundhouse, good grief. Yeah. Anyway, right. yeah, so, I'm trying to argue for better, so better definitely, score here. So definitely four and a quarter. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. I am going to... Start at four and a quarter. Oh. I'm going to start at four and a quarter because, like I said, the story here. Yeah. Because we thought Keith Lee was going to go heel, and this match would have been a perfect spot to do it. But instead, we saw Dominic... Di or not... Oh God, no, I'm... Damien Priest, match. yeah. We saw Damien Priest turn heel. Ostensibly turn heel. Yes. Yeah. He wasn't necessarily a baby face, but we weren't for sure. And, like I said... He's got a cool ass entrance. Ugh. Baby faces usually have the coolest. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go from four and a quarter to four and a half, based off of a great show. Yeah. Because, oh, man, top to bottom, this is a great show. Yeah, damn near perfect. Support no DQ. So if your idea of keeping up with NXT is watching us for thirty or forty minutes every week instead of the actual show. I highly recommend watching this week's episode of NXT from beginning to end. But thank you for watching us regardless. Oh yes, oh yes. And uh, that brings us to the end of this episode of What's NXT. And uh, thank you for joining us. Please join us tomorrow for the NXT party. That is where we review NXT UK. I believe it's episode 53? Yep. 53. Man, we have reviewed 53. Two episodes of NXT UK. Okay. We've been doing it from the beginning, folks. Believe it or not. So, if you'd like to help us review a future episode of NXT UK, be up on the big screen. Uh, come have a spot of NXT with us. You can find me on Twitter. Go to nodq.com forward slash Stefan. That's S-T-E-F-A-N. Or if you just want to look me up on Twitter, it's at Stefan R. Osborne. O-S-B-O-R-N-E. As always, the R stands for Restricted. You can also find The Gentleman on Twitter. At NoDQ General and also my Facebook group, Armbar, all capital, A-R-M-B-A-R. Exclamation point. Uh, lots of discussions, lots of memes. Pretty much everything you look for in a wrestling page is on there. Yep. That's where you find With us very on. limited spoilers. Yeah. If yeah. any. Find us on Armbar on Facebook, uh, but because of spoilers, I don't add fans on Facebook, just yeah. on Twitter. And if you want me to follow you back on Twitter, just DM me, and I will. i got no problem with that. Same thing on Instagram. You can find me at Osborne.Stefan. I have an Instagram with a profile picture, and I think that's it. <laughs> I have like 53 followers, and I'm like, why? I don't do anything. <laughs> but feel free to follow me if it makes you feel better. I get like a new follower every week. It's crazy. Yep. So, that's not all the plugs. No, it isn't because you, sure. you, you have to plug our channel. Oh, in Toronto? Let's see. Yeah. If you like this video, click the like button. That's mm -hmm. underneath me. Mm -hmm. If you like all of our videos, do yourself a favor. Click the subscribe button that's over there underneath Jerry. Oh, he's back to pointing at it. Thank you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in there, in between, is a share button. 
And please share us with your friends on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram. They like Wherever. wrestling. Share they like NXT. Everywhere. If they like NXT UK, maybe they'll like watching us talk about it for forever. Yeah, for, that'd be great. <laughs> At this point, it's been forever. Well, we, we've got 92 subscribers <coughs> right now on After Match. Yeah. So. If uh, you want to get these videos early and in HD, you can find them on Aftermatch Wrestling. That's all one word. A-F-T-E-R-M-A-T-C-H. Aftermatch Wrestling. Wrestling. We are at 92 subscribers. Eight more subscribers, and we are going to start doing this show, What's NXT, live every week on NoDQ.com's YouTube page. Mm -hmm. We can't do it on ours because that requires 1,000 subscribers. We're a little far away from that. Yeah, but at 1,000 subscribers, we're going to start doing both What's NXT and the NXT Party live. Mm -hmm. We're going to just do everything live. Um, it's better I, that I, way I, I think we'll you have guys enough, can ask us questions. I, I think we'll have enough confidence by then. Who knows? Or we'll, it'll be a miserable failure. Either way, it's going to be entertaining. <laughs> By the time we have a thousand subscribers, hopefully you have a phone where you can keep up with the uh, questions. It is possible. I imagine with a thousand we might actually get a few questions that we might want to answer. Uh, otherwise. We'll probably get a whole bunch we don't. If you have questions for us and you'd like to deliver them live, if you have something you want us to sign, God forbid, somebody, I don't know, we have fan art. Yeah. Stranger things have happened. Anyway, you can find us in Toronto on SummerSlam weekend. Yeah, we're going all the way up north. Got my pass card and everything. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> it's amazing how much it costs to cross the border. <laughs> it is n literally nuts. Yep. But, yeah, we're going to be in Toronto. You can go to nodq.com forward slash Toronto to find out information and RSVP for the meetup. Yeah, it's going to be at the Worst Union Station Yeah. in, um, in Toronto. That is not worst. That's versed, but Versed. Still, all they all they really sell is uh, beer and uh, sausage. German sausage, and I'm good. I'm yeah. gonna be eating or drinking. I'm just gonna be there hanging out. Worst place ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for schnitzel. Yeah. Then I would have eaten. Oh but yeah. No, I'm good. Anyway, yeah, you can find us in Toronto. So we'll be we'll be hanging out there, and also on at SummerSlam, we're gonna be hanging around there too. So. Who knows, but you'll see my lumbering ass walk around. So. Yeah. However, if you want to join the NX team, uh, help us review episodes of NXT UK or do the radar report or whatever, uh, you can also leave a comment down below with your email address, and we can do it that way. That's how we got Chris Mace. Mm -hmm. And he is now the holiday. Yep. Because we'll give you a nickname and everything. Nickname, access to the chat room, your own bathroom key, whatever. Anything and everything. Mm hmm. Not really. For the general Jerry Slaughter, I am the Wizard of No DQ, <laughs> Osborne. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you in XT time.